Welcome back to MMA Al Dente. I am the guy who picked Stephen Wonderboy Thompson to defeat Tyron Woodley. And I'm here to talk about Gilbert Burns versus Bilal Muhammad, co-main event for UFC 288. Gilbert Burns is 22 and 5, 36 years old, and he's giving up one inch of height and one inch of reach to Bilal Muhammad, who is 34 years old, and he's got a record of 22 and 3. Let's get into that record. Bilal Muhammad has 22 wins, as I said, five TKOs, one submission, and 16 decisions. His three losses come one by knockout and two by decision. The losses are all in the UFC. He was knocked out by Vicente Luque in his second or third fight in the UFC. And he avenged that loss last year, whatever it is, six, seven years later. He avenged that loss in a five-round decision. And his two losses by decision are to Jeff Neal and Alan Joban. Jeff Neal was more recent, maybe three years ago. And Alan Joban was in his debut in the UFC. And that was a fight in which I became a fan of Bilal Muhammad because... He was the last man standing in that one. Joe Ben certainly should have won that fight, welcoming him to the UFC, and he did win the fight. But Bilal Muhammad was all over him in round three, and he proved to me, at least, that if it was a five-rounder, he would have been getting his hand raised. And, of course, Bilal, he's on a, in, an incredible streak right now. I don't know what it is. It's something like ten fights altogether. Hey, my cat's ass. Ten fights altogether, and... Uh, he hasn't lost one of them. You know, only one is a no contest, of course, the, the champion, Leon Edwards. But Bilal has a lot of momentum. He's in his prime right now. Never looked better than he did against Sean Brady, in my opinion, getting him out of there in round two. And he's going up against Gilbert Burns here, who has just as much to lose. Maybe not the same winning streak, but he's got he's losing a title shot if he loses this fight. That's really what's at stake here. And... I think if you were to if you were to put either one of them in a title fight right now, no one would bat an eye. They've both earned it before this fight, but certainly by stepping up to this fight, they've already earned it. Uh, you know, again, this is a fight they're taking on very short notice, relatively for such a big fight. I don't know, a few weeks, if that. So, uh, really, credit to both these guys for making this card. But Gilbert Burns, he's got a record of twenty-two and five. My cat's tail is blocking his record. He's got six um, six knockouts, nine submissions, seven decisions. And his five losses come two via knockout, three via decision. I could name all of his losses. Dan Hooker and Kamaru Usman knocked him out. Usman got him out of there early in round three. And Dan Hooker got him out of there deep in round one. And then he lost decisions to Rashid Magomedov, Michel Prezeras, and Hamzat Chemaev. Of course, I'm sure you've seen that fight. And that's where he's got all of his momentum from, really. You know, he's had a lot of big fights lately, Gilbert Burns. You know, maybe he didn't gain too many fans from his last one against Jorge Masvidal, even though that was against arguably the biggest star he fought. That, that, that is certainly the biggest star he fought. And it was a fight that was, in a lot of ways, bigger than the Hamzat fight or the Kamar Usman title fight. Just because of what he standed to gain, stood to gain from the popularity. But the fight didn't really deliver. He kind of neutralized Hoy Masvidal and won a decision, as most of Masvidal's losses seem to go. But uh, still, he's got a considerable amount of momentum from that Hamza Chamaya fight alone. And uh, yeah, Gilbert Burns, he's definitely the more versatile guy, I want to say. He's got. Lesser striking, I want to say, than Bilal Muhammad, but more powerful striking. He's got much more, you know, knockout power, which does lend itself to, you know, scoring points sometimes. Uh, he does have weaker wrestling than Bilal Muhammad, but much better jiu-jitsu. And Bilal Muhammad is no slouch in the jiu-jitsu department. He's never been submitted. And, you know, he's uh, he's got a good, you know, a chunk of subs anyway. But Gilbert Burns is the much better jiu-jitsu artist. I very much doubt he could be submitted by Bilal Muhammad unless he's beaten to the point of exhaustion. And despite me having a lot of faith in Bilal Muhammad's jiu-jitsu, if Burns was on top of him and he was able to take him down, win the wrestling battle, I'd say a submission is likely. The thing is, he's not going to, so it's not. I think uh, 
Gilbert Burns winning by submission is, you know, on the low end of possibilities here. I think he would have a, a better chance of even winning by knockout, to be honest, because that's the one way Bilal Muhammad has been finished. And Gilbert Burns, again, he can fucking crack with the best of them. But the wrestling is going to dictate this fight, and of course the cardio and whatever else. There are too many factors here to really know exactly what's going on. I know Ramadan was recently, and Bilal Muhammad was training during Ramadan, which I've never gone through, either the training or the Ramadan, but uh, I imagine it's really fucking difficult. And, of course, I don't even know when exactly they took this fight, but, of course, it wasn't too long ago. So I can't say that I know it's going to be the best version of Bilal and the best version of Gilbert and everything I know about their cardio and everything else is going to make sense watching this fight. But assuming that it does, which is all that I can do, I'm taking Bilal Muhammad to win a decision. I'm taking him to win a decision. I'm taking him to win the wrestling battle, to definitely suffer some, you know, whatever, some dicey situations with Gilbert Burns, who Gilbert Burns, I'm sure, is going to try to take him down, and I'm sure he's going to try to crack him, and Gilbert Burns will, uh, will throw down, of course, we've seen in the Hamzat Shemaya fight famously, as well as many other fights, he's down for a war. So Bilal Muhammad, it's not going to be easy, but I'm counting on him to win enough small moments and scratch and claw. And I'm also trusting on the guy that I know as a fighter has good cardio and was meant to fight five rounds. Although, bear in mind, I said this same shit by Ricky, about Ricky Simone, who was finished in round five a few days ago. But Bilal Muhammad, 16-2 and two in decisions. Gilbert Burns, his decision record is 7-3. and three. Both very good, but... 16 and 2 is 16 and 2. Bilal Muhammad, he's not the greatest finisher, but he's a fucking potent point fighter. And I'm expecting him to get it done. Plus, uh, by decision, it's plus 200 for Bilal Muhammad. I've thrown a sprinkle on that, but my heart's not totally into it. I played his parlay. Uh, I played uh, his money line because that can go in parlays at minus 110. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Even money. Even money. Even money. And uh, Gilbert Burns is minus 130. And, uh,. Yeah, that's it. Hope it's a damn good fight. Again, credit to both these guys for stepping up. When I look at this card, especially with Bryce Mitchell falling out and whoever the fuck else fell out, you know, uh, it's awesome that these two guys stepped up. Like, share, subscribe, all that horse shit. Check out my other videos.